In this video, I want to talk a little bit about MATLAB performance. There's some real basic strategies you can use to speed up your MATLAB scripts, and I just want to um, go through some of those. And then at the end, I'll talk about a tool, a profiling tool, that lets you diagnose in a fairly um, straightforward way which lines are the slowest in your, in your code, and then you can focus on speeding those up if performance is indeed an issue. So as a case study, um, I thought I'd just generate a bunch of random numbers and that will allow me to um, play with different uh, loop sizes and vector sizes and, and look at performance a little bit. So uh, this command rand generates a random number between 0 and 1, uniformly distributed, and saves it into the, as an element in a, a vector called x. We do th the same thing with a vector called y. So at the end, x and y will be filled with a bunch of random numbers. Then for z, we take the sum of the squares of a pair of those numbers, one from x, one from y, save it in a vector z. So a loop might look like this. This loop generates 500 values of x, 500 values of y, and then combines those to form 500 values of z. So I use a for loop to loop the, through here 500 times. Then I calculate the mean of z, the standard deviation of z, and then the correlation coefficient between x and y. So how long does this take? Well, I can use my watch to do this, but it's better to have MATLAB do it. So there's a pair of commands called tick and talk. I put tick at the beginning. I start a timer, essentially. Then I run through all the code, and then I end with talk. When talk is called, it gives you the CPU time since tick was called. So this will tell you how long it takes to run this script. For 500, um, triplets essentially it takes about five seconds on my fairly old desktop to do this so why is this slow well the main reason it was so slow is because I didn't have semicolons at the end of these three lines and so what was happening it was every time I saved a value of x or y or z it was displaying the entire vector to the screen and and display is just no, notoriously slow so you don't want to do that so you put the semicolons here don't display it as it's calculating display it at the end if you really want to see it okay so just that allowed me to go up by a factor of 60 in points that is from 500 to 30,000 and and it took a little less time actually it went from five seconds down to four so this is maybe 60 times faster and that's a nonlinear thing because it's showing all of these vectors every time. So if I needed a million points, it would just take forever without those semicolons. So use semicolons until you want to see the output and then, and then get rid of it. But we can still speed this up further. Um, there's a concept called pre-allocation. Uh, the loops before, every time we went through here, uh, each of these vectors x, y, and z were getting one element longer. So every time it had to go and find space from the operating system to save these values. And it's better if you save all the space you need up front and then fill those up later. So here we set x to be a vector filled with zeros that's n got n elements in it. And same with y and same with z. So we start out with the vectors, the, the size will be at the end, but filled with zeros. Then we go and just run through the loop n times and do all the same calculations. Um, and this took about three seconds, but I'm up now to 10 to the seventh data points. So it, it allowed me to go another factor of 300 times more points and again got slightly faster anyway. So that's a substantial um, win just by itself. Uh, so remember, if you're using vectors or arrays inside a loop, be sure to pre-allocate them so the size is set ahead of time and that'll save a ton of execution time. There's still more you can do. Um, you can vectorize things and get rid of the loop altogether and that's what this does. So um, I set the number of points I want, I start the timer and now I instead of going through a loop and each time through calculating one value of x, I calculate them all at once. So this command rand of n comma 1 gives me an n vector, n by 1, uh, filled with random numbers in one call. And MATLAB has set up these routines to, to do that quickly. And so it's faster to do that than to, than to do a loop.
Okay, so this lets you avoid the loop altogether. And then I can use just vector math to go through element by element, not vector math, math but element by element math to go through element by element and add the first the square of the first element of x to the first first element of y and the second element of x squared to the square of the second element of y etc so this dot operator on the on the squaring command instead of square squaring the vector it squares each element individually within the vector so it does element by element math squares each element and then adds those two vectors together so this one command gives me a vector z which is the sum of the squares of each element um, in the corresponding uh, spots in x and y so this gives me the squares of the elements and then i could sum that up if i wanted to and get the sum of the squares if that was of interest so this command gives me all the values of x in one shot this gives me all the values of y in one shot this gives me all the values of z in one shot i was able to double the number of points again and get about the same time four seconds versus three so it's not quite twice as fast to do to do this once you've optimized those loops but still it's better to do without the loops if you can get away with it and to me the code is cleaner now um, especially once you get used to this this um, this element by element math for example all right so those are just some basic techniques you can use to do this um, there is one other thing I wanted to show you okay so here's my um, MATLAB window and I've got the editor here and it's um, it's buried within in the MATLAB window so the output is over on the right uh, the command window and the editor is here and one thing to note is these little orange bars this is a fairly new uh, version of MATLAB um, R2009B and, and um, if I highlight these little orange bars it'll give me some profiling or some some performance hits so this one says if you terminate this line with a semicolon you can suppress the output and things will speed up so you can even just fix that immediately okay so I could look at all these um, down here uh, I guess right here it talks about the um, pre-allocation right it says the size of y is changing each time through so these little orange bars will help you catch some profiling errors and then the other thing you can do is go desktop profiler and I've already run this so I put the name of my script here and executed it and it took a little while and then it shows me all of this so you can see that um, line number six in my script took 15% of the total execution time, okay? And line number five took about 11%, right? And so those were the two commands that were displaying the output to the screen, uh, same with Z. So just those three commands took uh, almost half the total execution time of the script just because that display of graphic information is so slow, okay? Um, you can uh, also scroll down and you see these are the emlint results and those are those things that were little orange hints that were on the in the editor so you can see on line three it's suggesting you might want to use a semicolon on line five it's suggesting you want to pre-allocate so all this repeats what was um, highlighted by those little vertical orange bars in the editor that's useful information then there's some overall information about the number of lines in the code and that sort of thing and then down here it goes line by line and gives the execution line for each so you can say that it colors in red the slowest ones and line number six seems to have been the slowest uh, and then from here you can actually click here and it'll bring you right back to that line and then you can fix it if you want okay so the profiler helps quite a bit too so try to keep in mind those hints I gave you earlier but overall the profiler can can help you with a lot of that and anytime your your scripts are running slow you should check the, these hints in the editor and also take a look at the profiler alright so good luck with that